morning. Welcome to the online video lecture on analog circuits. In the last class, we have discussed about MOSFET internal capacitance and uh, junction capacitances. Before we proceed to the today's topic, which is high frequency MOSFET model, let us review the formulas that we have derived in the last class. Uh, the first formula is when the MOSFET uh, is operated in a triode region, uh, triode region, the capacitance gate to source capacitance, which is equivalent to the gate to drain capacitance, uh, the expression for that is uh, 0.5 times uh, width and uh, length of the MOSFET times oxide capacitance. So this is the formula for uh, MOSFET operated in triode region. Uh, next we have MOSFET when it is operated in uh, saturation region. Uh, the gate to source capacitance is given by CGS equals 0.66 times WL times COX and CG is going to be 0 and gate to drain capacitance is going to be 0. So these are the capacitance uh, that comes under saturation condition. Uh, next we have uh, when the MOSFET is operated in uh, cutoff region, gate to source capacitance which is equivalent to gate to drain capacitance equals to 0 whereas gate to body capacitance equals W times L times COX. So these are the capacitance values when MOSFET is operated in cutoff region. We have seen the overlapping capacitance because most of the times, you know, uh, the source region overlaps with the gate region. Therefore, we have a capacitance which uh, exists in the overlapping region. Therefore, overlapping capacitance COV is uh, equal to W width times LOV. LOV is nothing but length of the overlapping region. Uh, multiplied with oxide capacitance COX. So this is the expression for overlapping uh, capacitance. Uh, next we have uh, junction capacitances. So in uh, for uh, junction capacitance we have uh, CSB. CSB is nothing but uh, the junction capacitance that exists between the uh, source and the body CSB equivalent to CSB naught. So this is under uh, zero bias divided by 1 plus VSB divided by V naught. So V0 is nothing but it is a built-in potential. Next we have uh, CDB. So the capacitance that exists between uh, drain and the body, CDB is equivalent to CDB0. So CDB0 is nothing but uh, the capacitance between the drain and body at uh, zero bias divided by root of uh, one plus VDB. VDB is nothing but uh, voltage between drain and the body divided by V0. V0 is nothing but built-in uh, potential. So these are the formulas that we have uh, discussed in the last class. Now let us take a one example uh, based on these uh, formulas before we proceed to the today's topic. <coughs> uh, the example is as follows. For an n-channel MOSFET with uh, oxide capacitance given as uh, uh, 10 nanometer, length of the transistor is given 1 micrometer, Width of the transistor is 10 micrometer. Overlapping uh, length is 0.05 micrometer. CSB naught source to body capacitance under zero bias equals source to drain to body capacitance under zero bias, which is equal to 10 femto farad. 1 femto is equal to 10 to the power of minus 15 farad. V naught built in potential is given as 0 0.6 volts. Source to body voltage or source to bulk voltage is given as 1 volt and drain to source voltage is given as 2 volts. So with all this uh, data given, we need to calculate the following capacitance namely COX, oxide capacitance, overlapping capacitance, gate to source capacitance, gate to drain capacitance, source to body capacitance and drain to body capacitance. So this, are all, uh, this is a straight uh, forward problem. So if you know formula, we can substitute and uh, find out the answer. Okay. Now, first of all, let us take uh, oxide capacitance COX. We know that oxide capacitance is equal to epsilon OX divided by TOV. TOV is the thickness of the oxide. So, they can substitute the values given here. TOX is given as uh, uh, 10, uh, 10, 10 nanometer and the epsilon OX is given as uh, 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 3.45 into 10 to the power of minus 11. So sometimes if this value is not given, so we should assume the silicon oxide capacitance, oxide permittivity, silicon oxide permittivity. So its value is 3.45 into 
into 10 to the power minus uh, 11. So substituting you know uh, all these values you will uh, get uh, oxide capacitance as 3.45 into 10 to the power of minus 3 farad per meter square uh, or this is equal into 3.45 femto farad per micrometer square. Next capacitance calculation is overlapping capacitance. We know that overlapping capacitance is given by W L O V times C O X. Uh, C O X is already calculated. L O V data is given. W width of the uh, capacitance is width of the MOSFET is given. So we can substitute all this value. So then uh, the value of uh, C O V is going to be 172 femto farad. Next, let us find the uh, gate two source capacitance. Gate two source capacitance is two by three times W L C O X plus overlapping capacitance C O V. Substituting the, all the values of you know the W L C O X and C O V, the value of uh, C G S uh, which is equal to 24.72 femto farad. So next is the uh, C G D which is also equal to C O V. The value is 21.72 uh, femto farad. So next we have uh, source to body capacitance. We can substitute in the formula which we already discussed. So the value of CSB, a uh, source to body capacitance is found to be 6.1 femtofarad. Lastly, we have uh, drain to body capacitance. Drain to body capacitance, we can substitute in the formula that we have discussed. So the value of uh, the CDB is found to be 4.1 uh, femtofarad. So these examples are very important to understand the concept. So I hope the, you have understood the uh, uh, all these capacitors that we have discussed with reference to MOSFET. Now let us proceed to the today's topic. Today we are going to discuss high frequency MOSFET uh, model. In the last class we discussed about uh, gate capacitance effect. In today's class we will take up particularly the high frequency MOSFET model. Uh, here we have a first diagram that shows uh, uh, the high frequency small signal model of the MOSFET which has got uh, uh, totally the four capacitances namely we have uh, CGS gate to source capacitance here we have CGD gate to uh, drain capacitance here and uh, which is connected between the gate and uh, the drain CGS is connected between the gate and the source source is here uh, source terminal is here and uh, the, we have capacitance CDB so CDB is a capacitance that uh, uh, that effect is across uh, drain and uh, uh, body of the MOSFET and lastly we have a source to body capacitance CSP so this capacitance exists between the source terminal and the uh, body terminal of the MOSFET here. so this is the uh, small signal uh, uh, MOSFET uh, a small signal model under this we have we are seeing uh, four capacitances here so as we said already MOSFET is made up of uh, four terminals namely gate uh, source body and uh, drain terminal most of the times we will uh, short circuit uh, source and the body so therefore the capacitance existing between them and the voltage that exists between them uh, will be ignored now let us see other uh, parameters uh, in this uh, small signal uh, model of the mosfet so we have a uh, vgs vgs is nothing but the voltage that is applied uh, between the gate and the source terminal this is vgs uh, we have uh, a current source here uh, the value of this current this is a dependent current source uh, the current flowing through this uh, has a magnitude of uh, gm times uh, vgs gm is nothing but the uh, transconductance uh, vgs is nothing but uh, the voltage between gate and source uh, that means the current that is flowing uh, here uh, that uh, this current depends on the gate to source voltage uh, that is applied between the gate and source we have another uh, current source here which we have not seen in earlier uh, our, uh, models but here we have introduced a, a new current source this uh, current source models the uh, body effect so now this current source uh, magnitude is given by gmb is nothing but uh, body transconductance times uh, vbs so this is nothing but voltage that exists between the body or bulk and the uh, source vbs so so this is an additional current source so this is uh, the the total the, uh, this complete model uh, refers to the uh, a, a, a body effect which includes the body effect. So now let us see uh, the, the while ignoring you know some capacitances here, so the the model can be simplified. So let us see what all the capacitance we can ignore here. So now we can see here the body as I told you uh, the source and the body for all the circuits for most of the circuits source and the body we are going to short circuit. So the moment we short circuit source and the body, uh, the VBS becomes you know the eliminated. So the VBS we don't see in the next circuit here. 
So we have only three capacitances here. Or one is CGS, uh, CGD, and uh, CDB. So this uh, VBS got eliminated, and uh, the CDB yeah, exists here. That's exists, but in the sense we are short circuiting this uh, source and uh, uh, body, uh, source and the bulb. So this capacitance is directly applied to the uh, sources. So CDB exists uh, uh, between the drain and the uh, source, or drain and the body or bulb. Okay, so next is uh, we have uh, with this current source will get eliminated because uh, we are going to short circuit the source and the uh, bulk here, source and the body. So once you short circuit this VBS becomes zero, this uh, term will get uh, this becomes uh, uh, zero. So therefore, this current source becomes uh, eliminated. So the resulting uh, model is as shown here. The resultant model comprises now we have a CGD, we have CGS capacitance, CDB. Uh, along with uh, we have an R naught capacitor, R naught resistance here. So R naught is nothing but a resistance that models a channel length modulation or early effect. So if we uh, include early effect uh, model, early effect into the model, then R naught must be introduced. R naught must be added here. So R naught uh, uh, models the early effect in a uh, transistor. This is more accurate uh, model uh, on eliminating or short circuiting the source and the uh, body. The model simplifies to uh, this level here. Okay. Uh, now, further a few more uh, capacitance can be uh, simplified because CDB uh, is uh, when we compare you know CDB and uh, CG, uh, S and CGD, this value is going to be very very small here. So CDB can be eliminated uh, in the next uh, uh, small signal model. So you will see here only two capacitances CGS and CGD. So these are the two capacitances that are dominant in the MOSFET model. So therefore, in all our uh, model, we will uh, include these two capacitances. CDB, a drain through body capacitance, since it is it has got very small value, which is in the range of uh, femtofarad, uh, fractions of femtofarad, this uh, value, this uh, capacitance can be eliminated. The resulting model of eliminating or uh, removing the uh, CDB is uh, as shown here. Okay. So next uh, we will see. Uh, uh, so this completes, you know the. Uh, the high frequency MOSFET model. So this is the high frequency MOSFET model. So we can say here this is the simplified high frequency uh, MOSFET model. Okay. So which has got two capacitors and we have a, a current source whose uh, current uh, magnitude is GM times VGS and we have an R naught here that this model's uh, channel length uh, modulation. So we have eliminated here the body or bulk terminal here. So this in this uh, model we have only three terminals: gate, uh, source, and as well as uh, drain. Okay. Next, so we will uh, uh, go through the details of this. This is uh, it is nothing but uh, you know the uh, derivation of expression of uh, a short circuit current gain I naught and as well as I n that is done in the next uh, uh, next you know the page. So here uh, this, this shows the summary of you know the uh, derivation of short circuit current gain. Okay, now let us move on to the next uh, topic, which is MOSFET unity uh, gain uh, frequency. Let us define first what is this MOSFET unity gain frequency. Later on, we can obtain the expression for short circuit current gain. Uh, so let us see that uh, what is this unity MOSFET unity gain uh, frequency. The MOSFET unity gain frequency is denoted as uh, EFT. Uh, let me take the, the pen. Uh, the MOSFET unity gain frequency is denoted as EFT. EFT is called as you know the uh, unity gain uh, frequency. So this is EFT. The definition, this alternative name for this EFT is a figure of merit. Is one of the important uh, parameter uh, which is uh, used during the amplifier. So let us define what is this EFT. So EFT or unity gain frequency is nothing but uh, the frequency at which uh, the short circuit current gain of the common source configuration becomes unity. So that is the definition for uh, unity gain uh, frequency. It's a frequency basically uh, under the condition short circuit current gain is going to become unity. When short circuit current gain becomes uh, uh, one, so that uh, is called as the uh, unity gain uh, frequency. Now let us derive the expression for unity gain uh, uh, frequency. Even though in the previous uh, uh, page we have shown here uh, the simplified equations for unity gain uh, uh, frequency, uh, but here the details of this is shown uh, in this uh, slide, in this page. Okay. So now to derive the expression for EFT or unity gain uh, frequency, let us consider the MOSFET, and in particular. Uh, MOSFET uh, hybrid phi model. We have discussed this hybrid phi model in the module 1. We are considering this hybrid phi model to derive the expression for MOSFET unity gain of frequency FT. 
Now we can see here, uh, let us start with the uh, uh, common source amplifier here. So uh, in, uh, to, in, in this common source amplifier, as we can see, this is a traditional common source amplifier where we have V signal and uh, the signal is fed into the uh, MOSFET via the internal resistance of this V signal or signal. Through this uh, internal resistance of this, uh, the AC source is fed into the uh, MOSFET. Any DC source present in the uh, AC a signal source that is eliminated by this uh, capacitor because capacitor passes uh, AC and it uh, uh, blocks the DC. So the, all this, you know, the AC signal is directly fed into the uh, MOSFET here and this complete uh, uh, transistor amplifier, uh, a biasing circuit. So this shows the biasing circuit here. This, this complete uh, uh, part is the biasing circuit. Biasing circuit comprises RD, uh, the current source here and the resistance here. We have an uh, RG. So this is the gate uh, resistance here. So this uh, biasing scheme used in this circuit is uh, a current a constant current source biasing as we have discussed in earlier class this is a, a current mirror circuit present inside this uh, current source and we have a bypass uh, capacitor here cs so this is the uh, biasing circuit of a common source amplifier this is a common source amplifier and the output is taken across the drain point here uh, so so through the via the capacitor the cc2 this is another coupling capacitor cc2 and output is measured across rl here so this is a common source amplifier because under the AC condition, this uh, source uh, point is going to be uh, grounded. So its value voltage across at this point is going to be zero. So input is applied between the gate and the source and uh, AC input basically is applied between the gate and the source and output is measured between the drain and the source. Here. So so this, uh, out, this, uh, this shows that you know the source is a common between the input and the output. So therefore the circuit is common source amplifier. Now already we have discussed about common source amplifier. Now let us uh, modify this circuit uh, by giving up feeding an input signal current source at the input. Here we have seen uh, voltage source is taken as the input uh, but uh, to derive expression for uh, uh, unity uh, gain frequency we need to fed uh, with current uh, uh, source signal and the source signal uh, value current source signal value is going to be I A. So that we need to fed here and uh, the output is going to be short circuited. As per our definition, uh, the FT is defined as it's a frequency at which the, there's a short circuit current gain must be calculated. So therefore output will be uh, short circuited and under that conditions we are going to calculate the current gain of common source here. So we should not take ordinary common source amplifier. So to derive the expression for unity gain uh, uh, frequency, we should uh, feed here with uh, a current source and uh, we have to short circuit the uh, output here. Uh, the resultant circuit is as shown here. This is the simple version, simplified version of uh, uh, the, for the derivation of you know the unity gain frequency. So we are we are uh, uh, fed with you know the IA current source uh, to the gate of the uh, amplifier circuit. Though we have not showed complete amplifier circuit, so this is a simplified uh, you know, the common source amplifier circuit. And we are going to short circuit the drain and as well as uh, ground terminal. Uh, the short circuit current that is flowing here is uh, labeled as I naught and I is nothing but the uh, input current which is uh, given uh, to the gate of the uh, uh, common source amplifier. So now we will uh, replace here to derive the expression for uh, unity gain frequency. Let us replace uh, uh, this MOSFET with the uh, hybrid pi model. Okay, So let us see that what changes happens in the circuit here. So once we replace uh, the uh, uh, transistor here, a common source uh, configuration based transistor, with its, high, uh, with, with its hybrid uh, pi model, the circuit, uh, uh, the model looks like here. We have an IA, IA which is nothing but uh, uh, input current source. Uh, the model, the transistor now is equal to uh, this, uh, this elements. So these are all the elements that belongs to the uh, transistor. And there's a short circuit uh, uh, between the drain and the source. You can see here, there's a short circuit current, which is uh, I naught. Now, within the pi model, we can see there are uh, two capacitances. One is a CGD gate to drain capacitance, and there is a CGS gate to uh, source capacitance. And there is a current source here, GM times VGS. This is a dependent uh, current source. So, current flowing, the magnitude of current flowing here depends on the voltage VGS here. So, uh, so this is the uh, uh, small signal uh, model uh, by replacing common source amplifier with uh, hybrid pi model. The small signal model can be obtained.
the only thing is uh, the output will be short circuited here and the input is fed with the uh, current source here now let us uh, start uh, deriving the equation for the uh, 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 unity gain uh, uh, frequency so how do we uh, start with that now let us apply Kirchhoff current law at the uh, drain terminal of the transistor here. so this is the drain terminal of the transistor if we apply Kirchhoff current law here so the incoming current is going to be the I naught and uh, uh, the, the, the current that are entering at this node is going to be one is I naught and the other one is going to be the uh, I1 current here so these two currents are entering therefore it is left hand side we have I1 plus uh, I naught the current that is leaving this node is gm times vgs so gm times vgs here so this is the equation that we obtain after applying the Kirchhoff current law at uh, node here uh, now let us uh, replace i1 with uh, uh, scgv times vgs how do you obtain this that is shown here so voltage across this uh, is going to be uh, vgs so the reason is you know the since uh, uh, the source uh, is going to be uh, grounded here for common source amplifier so source is grounded and there is a short circuit between uh, source and the drain so if this is going to be at zero volts so then there is a short circuit uh, between the source and the drain so therefore this also will be at the zero volts here so therefore the voltage across this uh, is going to be vgs across this capacitance uh, cgs uh, there is a voltage uh, vgs here so at this node the voltage is vgs at this node the voltage is zero volts Therefore, voltage across uh, the CGD capacitance is VGS. Now, to uh, find out the expression for current here, I1 here. So, I1 is nothing but uh, voltage across this, which is VGS, uh, divided by the impedance across this. So, impedance is nothing but 1 by J omega times the CGD. So, J omega can be substituted with uh, S here. So, therefore, this goes to numerator and that becomes S yes, CGD times uh, VGS. So now here I1 we came to know that it is SCGD times uh, VGS. Now we can substitute uh, in this uh, equation. So therefore I1 is substituted here, I0 is retained here. So this becomes GM times VGS. Uh, now, now the I0 uh, can be obtained by tra uh, transferring this uh, to the uh, right hand side. So I0 becomes now GM times VGS minus SCGD times uh, VGS. Uh, in this uh, equation, we have a two terms. One is uh, GM times VGS. Other term is going to be SCGD times VGS. Since the CGD's value, capacitance value is going to be very small, which is in the range of uh, femtofarad. So this value, this uh, uh, this uh, the, that's multiplied with uh, this VGS also becomes small. So total term uh, here can be neglected. So once you neglect total term, the approximate equation for this uh, short circuit current I naught is going to be GM times VGS. Now let us uh, proceed further. So finally we obtained the uh, equation for short circuit current which is I0 equivalent to GM times VGS. Now let us uh, apply Kirchhoff current at the gate node and uh, we can obtain expression for the uh, input current here. Now let us uh, see that at the uh, gate node of uh, uh, this uh, model. At the gate node we can see here the incoming current is going to be I i and uh, the leaving currents of this node are I2 and as well as I. So therefore, I i will be equal to I one plus I two. So now again, if we have to derive you know equation for this uh, I two, the same concept you know the what we apply here, uh, the, the here also we can apply here. So the voltage across this is VGS and uh, the impedance across this is one by J omega CGS. So the total uh, expression for I two becomes now. So it is uh, uh, yes CGS times VGS. Okay. So we'll see that you know. Uh, further, uh, what we have derived here. <coughs> so now, as per our KCL equation, which is I is equal to I two plus I one, uh, I two is equal to now VGS divided by one divided by J omega times the CGS. So J omega can be substituted as S here. So this goes to numerator and I two becomes S CGS times uh, VGS. So that is that is the expression for I two. Uh, I1 we already know uh, in the previous uh, KCL equation we have derived the uh, equation for I1. We can substitute uh, this uh, I2 and I1 uh, in this equation, uh, KCL equation. So final equation for I would be uh, I equals S times CGS times VGS uh, plus S times CGD times VGS. We can take out S and VGS as a common factor from both the terms here. So the, the resultant equation is I equals uh, yes times uh, CGS plus uh, CGD into uh, VGS. Now we have finally the we can derive the 
equation for the ratio I0 by A. Since you know GM is going to be a negative for the common source amplifier to avoid a negative sign, we take here the, the observed value or the modulus value. So therefore, I0 by A, the magnitude of I0 by A equals now. So it is I0 uh, we already know. So GM times VGS and IA is uh, just now we have derived here. So we can substitute here IA value. Uh, VGS uh, cancels here. So resulting equation is uh, I0 by A. The magnitude of I0 by A equals GM times uh, uh, S into CGS plus CGD. So this is the final equation for short circuit uh, current gain. Now as per the definition, uh, we know that uh, for the common source amplifier, when we short circuit the output terminal and uh, when we apply input as a current source, the magnitude of I0 by A should be equal to 1. That is as per the definition of uh, FTA. So when we equate uh, this, you know, when we uh, equate, you know, the, uh, this, you know, this I0 by A to 1, so the resulting equation is GM divided by S into uh, CGS plus CGD, which is equivalent to 1. Now, for uh, physical frequencies, we can substitute uh, S as uh, 2 pi FT. So here we can substitute S as uh, 2 pi FT. And finally, we can obtain the expression for FT. So therefore, the unity gain frequency FT is given as uh, is equivalent to GM times uh, divided by GM divided by 2 pi times CGS plus CGD. Okay. So next, uh, uh, let us uh, uh, approximate the capacitance values here. Uh, since we have two capacitance here, CGS and CGD, uh, CGD is going to be very, very small value. This can be neglected here, and but CGS value can be estimated. So CGS value is nothing but uh, can be estimated using this equation, WL times COX. Uh, COX is nothing but epsilon OX by TOX. So the values are given here using these values. Uh, COX uh, can be estimated and finally we can uh, substitute COX here and CGS also value can be uh, calculated. So L value is given as 0.13 micrometer, W is 1 micrometer, oxide thickness is under Dangstrom, uh, then we have uh, oxide, uh, epsilon oxide, permittivity of silicon dioxide is 11.7 times epsilon naught which is absolute permittivity, absolute permittivity value is 8.854 into 10 to the power of minus 14. Farad per centimeter cube. So if you substitute uh, this epsilon uh, OX and the TOX, so and finally into the uh, this equation, CGS value can be estimated as 1 prime to Farad. CGD is uh, neglected because it's going to be a very small value. Now if uh, I assume, uh, if I assume the, uh, the value of transparent is 1 millivolt per volt, and if you substitute in the FT equation, so FT equation is nothing but uh, just now we have derived here, this is the FT equation, GM and uh, uh, this uh, 2 pi CGS value can be substituted here. So therefore, the value of FT is now 1 millivolt per volt, that is the GM value, uh, divided by 2 pi into this capacitance, 10 to the power of minus 15 uh, prem to uh, Farad here. Uh, one, one prem, uh, this is 1 prem to Farad as equal to 10 to the power of minus uh, 15. So the, if you simplify this, then the value of uh, final, final value of uh, FT is going to be 10 to the power of 12 divided by 2 pi into s to the power of uh, minus 1. Now we know that uh, this GM value is going to be uh, 1 millivolt per volt. This is uh, 10 to the power of minus 3. And the CGD value is going to be 10 to the power of minus uh, 15. Uh, now if you compare this, uh, if I assume that you know GM value is going to be very much uh, larger, uh, as we can see from the values that we have assumed here, GM value and S into CGD value. So since GM uh, value is going to be very much larger, from this we can estimate the value of uh, yes. So yes is nothing but when we see here GM side, left hand side, we have 10 to the power of minus 3, right hand side CGD value is going to be 10 to the power of minus 15, which is 1 prime per farad. So definitely this yes can be calculated from that. Yes value is going to be 10 to the power of uh, 12. So this uh, 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 this explains you know, this uh, tells us you know the value of you know the unity gain uh, frequency here. Okay. So uh, this completes you know the today's class and uh, uh, as you know the Monday onwards. You know, internal assessment test is going to commence. Uh, I wish all the best uh, uh, for all of you. Okay. Thank you uh, one and all for watching this today's lecture.